welcome uh, Dennis, please. Great round of applause. Hey, thank you. Uh, so first, apologies that I do not have any dog pictures in this. Once I saw the poocher demo, I was like, I, why was I thinking not putting dog pictures in here? Um, so I'm starting from, uh, from in the hole right now. Uh, so I'm going to talk about um, understanding A-B test analysis uh, with simulation. Um, and I'll kind of uh, move along. Um, so the plan of this talk is first sort of a brief intro to um, A-B testing. Uh, then kind of an overview of statistical uh, tests, um, and then uh, briefly um, uh, simulating distributions to better understand statistical tests. Um, there's kind of a lot of material here, and I might skip through things, but uh, if you have questions, um, feel free to interrupt me rather than everything at the end. Um, okay. Um, so some of the things that I hope uh, that you take away, um, I hope that you could learn something new about the PyData stack for analysis, visualization, or interactive experimentation. Or maybe you will learn to apply the PyData stack, stack that you already know to um, a problem that you don't know, like A-B testing and significance testing. Um, and most of all, this is just to demystify statistical testing with simulation. Um, just briefly about me. Um, yep, yeah, my name is Dennis O'Brien. Uh, I'm director of data science at GSN Games. Uh, uh, we have a number of, kind of uh, social mobile games, um, uh, poker, bingo, solitaire, things that maybe your aunts or grandmothers might play. Uh, uh, we do a lot of testing. I, I have interest in predictive analytics, machine learning, experimentation, analysis, data engineering. Um, and sort of before I got into data science, um, I was software engineer for a long time in video games. And before that, physics and computer science before that. Um, so let me first just talk about like, where experimentation fits into the overall data science um, uh, context. Um, so this image is from Monica Rigotti, um, her blog post, um, the AI hierarchy, hierarchy of Needs. Um, and sort of what you can think about, this is a pyramid, right, where you need to build these foundations before you can get up uh, uh, sort of higher up. And so you'll see up at the top is AI and deep learning. Um, the sexiest of the deep uh, of, uh, of data science, um, and then down at the bottom is just are you uh, is your game sending events? You know, I wouldn't call that sexy, but you can't do anything uh, without that. Um, so um, experimentation is kind of a, in that second bucket um, from the top. Um, A/B testing and experimentation, um, and it kind of requires a lot of things to be done right um, below it. Um, it has, it can have a huge um, impact on your organization. If your organization or game or product takes experimentation into its DNA where you're constantly testing, you're making good tests, you're learning from it, you're improving, um, you, you can really, over the course of, uh, of a year or months, um, make huge improvements. Um, so first, um, so that was A-B testing in context, and now I'm just going to talk about kind of analysis in context of A-B testing. So this is a framework, um, hat tip to Nathaniel Stevens from USF Data Institute. Um, uh, so QPDAC, um, it's, uh, it's a little bit challenged as an acronym, but okay, QPDAC. Um, it's this idea of question, plan, data, analysis, and conclusion. I'll just briefly walk through each of these. Um, so the Q in QPDAC is question. Um, so the idea is you start with um, some clear, concise, quantifiable question about your, um, about your uh, app. Uh, I, I am going to make these slides. Uh, the very last slide, I have a, a shortened URL for these slides. Um, so you can, um, you, you, can, you can get them that way if you want. Um, so anyway, the goal is to prove or disprove some hypothesis. Um, so for example, you might say, you know, we have this daily bonus. Um, you can only collect it in every 24 hours. I think if we decrease it to six hours, we're going to increase our average daily session time by 20%. Um, so, you know, that's very precise. Uh, it's very quantifiable. At the end, you'll prove it true or not. But it's important to kind of make this statement as uh, something that is um, either falsifiable or not. Um, so planning, um, the P is plan, um, and that, that's just what is your metric of concern? Um, in the previous one, we were talking about um, total session length over some period of time. 
Um, it might be um, a binary response variable. Did they click on the ad or not? Um, or a binary response, um, did they return the following day? Um, or it might be some uh, floating point number um, unbounded, like uh, how much revenue do they spend in 30 days from enrollment? Um, so uh, you got your metric, then you've got kind of your treatments or control, and then maybe one or more uh, uh, treatment groups that you want to experiment with. Uh, the idea of control is what you're going to fall back to if, uh, if, uh, if, if your question is not proven true. Um, yeah, what are your treatment groups, and how many players do you need in each one? So that's kind of a sample size um, analysis. Um, the D is for data. Uh, that's why we're all here tonight. Um, and uh, um, so that's just collecting. So you've launched the experiment. Um, it's out there live. You're enrolling players into um, the experiment. They're getting assignment um, uh, into one treatment group or another. Um, and you've got the, you know, all the metrics being collected. Um, and, and also important to kind of monitor the health of the experiment. Um, analysis, uh, just analyzing the data. So you've concluded the experiment and uh, you want to answer some questions. Um, you're, you, the question you started with, you, you want to answer with uh, uh, statistical inference. Um, and finally, a conclusion. You know, you've, you've, you, you've, uh, you've made a conclusion, you want to share it with uh, the product people, um, uh, sort of with the organization, um, document it for yourself in six months, um, et cetera. So yeah, we're only going to be talking about this A in QBDAC, so we're really um, focusing on just one small part. Um, uh, so we've already, so in this whole thought experiment, we've already concluded an experiment, we have the data, uh, we want to know which treatment was best, by how much, what's the significance. Um, and we want to later make a goal, to, uh, a, a, a recommendation to the product team. Um, or in an even better world, we've made these tools and dashboards where they can um, make the uh, call themselves. Um, so just kind of premising this whole talk, like what really can go wrong in that, right? Like there's all these statistical tests. Um, statistical inference is, you know, a good 100 years old. Um, really what can go wrong? Um, well, there's, there's kind of a, a lot of things that can go wrong, and it depends on how odd your data is. Um, uh, so you might do the wrong test for your metric. Like, is your metric um, a ratio? Is it a count? Is it a continuous variable? Um, uh, also, you might do the wrong test for your data distribution. Um, a lot of, uh, every test has some sort of assumptions that it's making about the uh, underlying uh, distributions. Um, and then, of course, there's the problem of multiple comparisons, right? The, uh, um, uh, if you have a p-value of 0 0.05 and 1 out of 20, you're going to have a false positive that you believe in. Um, so let's just get into the experimental analysis. So uh, the results, um, so in all these examples, the results are going to be a tidy data frame. Um, the ETL jobs um, kind of already put this into... Um, some format, um, and it's a schema kind of like this, where you've got every row is a player ID, what experiment was this, um, what treatment were they in in the experiment, and what's the metric um, that we're talking about, you know, what's this name, um, and then what's the value. Um, uh, and I've seen also, um, some people have an intermediate format where you also have a granularity like uh, days from enrollment or um, days from experiment start, um, so you really get even more granular. Um, but I'm going to stick with the schema up above. Um, so let's first go to an example and hope that switching to notebooks just works. All right. So um, we're going to do that. We're just going to make a data frame. Um, I'm using Bokeh here um, and a few other libraries. I don't know how easy this code is to read, but um, I'm going to share this as well um, afterwards as well. Um, so this is kind of first... Um, a um, oops, um, kind of a sort of first approach. So we're gonna have we're, we're generating a data for, um, a data frame. Um, I've kind of already hard coded that it's going to be. Uh, uh, where am I looking here? Uh, the metric value. Yes, yeah, so I've got player ID, experiment ID, treatment ID, metric ID, and then metric value. And the metric value, I'm just I'm sampling from 
sci-fi stats chunk normal. Um, all right, so here's my data frame that I get from that. Um, so yeah, I got player IDs, experiment IDs, all that stuff. Um, I just have a single metric ID in here. Um, and then I, but now I can start doing things. Like a really simple thing is compare the means of those two groups. So I can just use pandas and a group by um, on all the dimensions and then just do a mean and that just really easily shows me um, what my, the means of those two groups are. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so it's nice. You can also apply describe to a, um, a group and um, then it gives you even more than mean. It gives you kind of a lot of the standard metrics of describe. Uh, okay, but let's just make that kind of a little bit more general. So the previous thing, um, and I see, I, I think, kind of made this assuming a uh, width, but so I'll try some scrolling and hopefully it won't be terrible. Um, so I'm gonna say, let's make a, um, a distribution and there's gonna be a dictionary um, that maps kind of um, what's the name of this treatment group to, uh, it's gonna map a string to um, a kind of distribution. Um, and then it's gonna make all those other things in, the, uh, uh, in that data frame. And so that's nice, because now I don't have in my function hard-coded kind of what my distributions are. I can pass those to this function. Um, so I've kind of uh, uh, abstracted a few other things, like so making it a little bit easier to add multiple metrics. Um, and so anyway, um, here we go now. Um, this is passing, it's saying generate an experiment data frame. Group A is gonna be randomly sampled from sci-fi stats exponential. B is also gonna be exponential. They're gonna have different scales, same location. Um, so um, that's pretty much all. Oh, and then just uh, a little bit here just for plotting it. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail here, but anyway, here's just a bokeh chart showing um, uh, plotting. I'm a fan of OK. I love Matplotlib as well. Seaborn is awesome. Um, you know, the, the problem Python has is that there's just so many awesome um, uh, options available. Um, I, I go to Bokeh when I want interactivity. So you can do nice little things like, like move, your, um, uh, move your data around. Uh, you can put hover tips on there. You can kind of really make it an application. Uh, OK, let's go back to, oops, not that. Uh, okay, so just a quick aside. Um, so tidy data is kind of, the, the format we were looking at is tidy data. So I had one um, column called metric ID, which could hold um, session length, it could hold um, return day one, it could hold all kinds of different string values. Uh, I don't have to change my schema in order to um, add more metric types. So I can really just have one um, database schema, one data frame schema, and kind of operate on that. Um, and it's kind of in contrast to a wide data frame. Um, I, I have a notebook here, but kind of in the interest of time, and just because the most interesting things are later, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this. Um, but if you are interested, uh, check out Hadley Wickham's paper on tidy, tidy data. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, if you haven't um, run across it before, it's a uh, sort of a, a very interesting paradigm to think about data. Uh, one more quick aside, XPAN, a really awesome open source project on GitHub for A-B testing. Um, they also use tidy uh, data format. Um, and it's a great project to study if you want to really understand A-B testing um, analysis, um, different options there. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic project, XPAN, for experimental analysis. Um, so that previous thing, we just showed mean comparisons, but we didn't really do any statistical significance or anything. Um, so let's just talk about statistical significance. Um, really, really briefly, um, the framework is null hypothesis testing. So you always have some null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis might be um, these two distributions, the means are equal. Um, and the alternative hypothesis is that, well, the means are not equal. So they're always complementary. Um, so that only one, of, one or the other will be true. Um, so uh, in the end, you use the data to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. Uh, important to know that you're not proving the alternative hyp hypothesis, you're just we're choosing to reject the null hypothesis or not. 
Um, so there's several approaches to statistical significance, and I'm going to walk through some examples of each one. Um, uh, so there's parametric tests, non-parametric tests, and resampling tests. Um, you know, I'm really almost tempted to skip parametric tests and non-parametric tests and just go to resampling tests because they are just so awesome. Like, it, they kind of throw away that hundred years of statistical analysis that people went into understanding um, what does the T distribution look like and how do you prove the significance of a thing. Um, but um, but um, I won't skip it. <laughs> 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 um, so a quick aside, um, a really great blog post um, from Alan, Do Alan Downey. Um, he has a blog called Probably Overthinking It. Um, and he has uh, this thing called There is Only One Test. Um, and it's a really great framework that kind of puts all those, in, in the previous slide I had sort of parametric, non-parametric, um, uh, a randomization test. And they're really all doing the same thing. So here you can see you kind of have data. That's the data that you captured. And then you have some model of your data under the null hypothesis. And that's kind of simulated data. Um, um, and that get those two things together give you a test statistic. Um, and that test statistic then gives you kind of this observed effect um, and a p-value. Um, so whether you're talking about parametric, non-parametric, or uh, randomization you know, um, tests, they're, they're all doing the same thing. Um, it's, it's just um, they're going about it in different ways, different assumptions. Um, so first, parametric tests. Uh, they make some assumptions about the data distribution, um, and, um, and then they make some statistical inference on the data given those assumptions. Um, so usually they test for a specific moment of the distribution, so a mean comparison or a variance comparison. Um, uh, so just some examples, a t-test, um, it assumes the, your response variable is normally distributed. Um, Groups have equal variance, that's important. Um, continuous, and it's also a continuous value. Uh, Z-test, um, it assumes your test statistic um, is normally distributed kind of under the central limit theorem. Um, so let's just go to an example of what this looks like. Okay, so. Okay, that's the type of data variable. Okay, so this is quickly on t-test, so we're starting to now, some of the code that I wrote in the previous notebooks, we're putting it into shared code, and so I'm doing auto-reload. Um, here's uh, importing all that code. Um, now I'm making an experiment data frame with um, sort of a normal distribution. Um, so one of them is centered at 80, one's at 78, same scale. Um, generate the data, and then let's do, um, let's see what these distributions look like. Oh, normal distributions. Uh, I actually, at work, I never see normal distributions. Nothing is ever normally distributed. Um, in, in statistics textbooks, you learn all about normal distributions, but um, uh, it's really rare, unless you're talking about an aggregate or a sum or something. Um, so anyway, um, we've got this, um, these distributions, and then doing this, uh, the um, t-test is just calling sci-fi stats t-test for independent. Um, and then I'm passing these two um, series values, uh, arrays or series. Uh, in this case, it's actually a, a pandas series um, that works just as well. Uh, and, okay, so that's all well and good. That's if you want to do it one time. But, um, so now this is using kind of IPy widgets, um, which is kind of a, a um, interactive framework for the Jupyter Notebook. Um, and I'm, so I'm taking all these steps that I did before, I'm putting into a single function. And so in that function, I'm passing it some values of what are the, um, what are the, uh, the location and scale of each distribution, um, should we assume equal variance. And so it generates a distribution based on those, um, plots it, and then displays some summary stats. And then I make it interactive. Um, and so if I look at that, um, so now I've got um, IPy widgets kind of does all, oh, it unfortunately doesn't fit on the uh, screen. I bet there's ways I can get rid of that. But um, so, you know, you can kind of play around with moving these values to kind of change the, um, I think I just changed the variance of one of them. So that's going to violate the, uh, the t-test 
um, assumption. Um, anyway, it's kind of you know this little lab now where you can twiddle with um, distributions and kind of see um, what will, what are the means of those groups going to be, and what are the uh, p-values and the test statistic going to be. Um, it's also kind of I actually had fun. I was playing around with this and. I just saw how many times the p-value went um, below 0 0.05, even though I knew that those distributions were the same. Um, but that can happen, and that's um, just a, a random, uh, um, you know, you will sometimes incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. Uh, okay, let's go back to this one. So. So that's parametric chess. Um, so we can do the same thing with um, kind of a binary response variable. That was a normal distribution, but we could also do it for um, a um, for a binary response variable. So let me just look at that. So this one, I'm going to use chi-squared tests, and I'm going to generate data using Bernoulli distribution. So things are going to be ones or zeros. Um, and I'm going to pass at different rates. Um, anyway, I'm going to do kind of the same thing, and then finally make it all interactive. You know? So I can kind of look at, change these probabilities, and given the different probabilities, how do the um, p-values, chi-squared statistic, how do the means change? Um, so if you think playing with tools like this is fun, you're in the right place tonight, okay? So, um, and uh, one more. Um, so this is, again, a parametric test. And this is kind of exploring when things can go wrong with um, parametric tests. So um, it's kind of playing around with, um, what if you throw outliers in your data? Um, so maybe you have kind of a normal distribution, but you also have like a couple of oddballs in one group. Um, um, a, um, a common case I run into a lot as well is kind of what's called zero inflated Pareto distribution. So the idea is like um, in free to play games, um, almost no one spends money. So like 98% of your values for any test statistic are zero um, when it comes to revenue. And then the other, you know, two to 5% or whatever are non zero. Um, and of those two to 5%, they're crazy distributed. Um, so they violate everything about. Um, a normal distribution. Um, but I, I'm going to skip this because, again, in the interest of time. Um, so non-parametric tests. Um, so they don't make these assumptions um, about the distributions of the data. Um, so instead, what they do is they kind of they uh, transform uh, the data in some way or another. And the different uh, different tests do different transformations. Um, some examples are um, the rank. Um, that's probably the primary example. I kind of had to go for a stretch to find something else. But the idea is, uh, um, I have these two two um, lists of values: everyone's metric value in one group in control, and everyone's metric value in another. Let's say I sort it, and now instead of having, you know, eleven point seventeen, I'm going to say that's number one, and then the next one is number two, three, and so I substitute those. Um, uh, floating point numbers with ranks, um, and then um, there are uh, statistical tests you do then on those ranks, so the rank sums. Uh, there's also dealing with tie breaking. Um, so, you know, it's pretty cool because you're, it's now much more robust outliers. Um, um, uh, and, and for s some of the tests, um, oops, what am I doing? Uh, some of the tests, they really uh, don't lose any statistical power, like they work as well as, say, a t-test on a normally distributed data. Uh, so some examples, man whitney u test, kamogorov smirnov test. Um, so let's go into an example of one of these. All right, uh, so this is going to be with a man whitney u test. Um, so again, and this is kind of the same framework I'm doing for all of these. I'm going to generate, um, this time I'll do a log normal distribution. Um, 
and I'm going to use the Man Whitney U test. I'll get its its um, test statistic as well as p value, uh, and then I'll display all that stuff. Okay. All right, and um, yeah, this is. Uh, so this is something to play around with, but I just got the five minute single and I want to get to um, some of the more um, interesting stuff. So let me make some tracks here. Um. Okay, um, this is more on non-parametric. I won't go through this example. Um. Okay, so resampling and randomization tests. So. This is kind of the third paradigm of testing that I was talking about. Um, so in this one, you're just randomly rearranging or resampling the data in order to make some statistical inference. Um, so um, yeah, let's just go into, uh, so I'm gonna talk about two cases here. One is kind of bootstrap sampling, um, and the other is uh, 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 randomization or permutation testing. So in bootstrap sampling, um, you want to get some kind of estimate of the distribution of some test. So you have a sample of data that you collected, um, and you know it's probably not normally distributed, and so you want to know like what is the distribution of the um, of the test statistic. Um, so it's almost asking like what does the rest of the world look like? There's there's a, there's a sample I collected, and there's a population out there, and what does that sample out there look like? So kind of the pseudocode is you go through each distribution, you repeat some number of times, and you just randomly resample with replacement from that distribution. Um, so one item might be selected multiple times or no times. Um, um, so anyway, you, you select it of size M or N, whatever your original size was, and then you apply that statistic, whether it's mean or median or P95 or um, whatever it is you want to do. And then you kind of look at your um, uh, your, your distributions. It kind of gives you confidence intervals and um, uh, things like that. So I have an example of that, but now I probably have two minutes, so I'm going to skip that. Um, here's an idea of using bootstrapping for stratified sampling. I'm going to skip that. Um, so um, resampling test. So this one is, you know, save for the end, but like I was saying, like, the whole talk could really be about permutation tests because it, it's if you were going to keep one and throw everything else away, this is the one you would keep. Um, so the pseudocode for that is I'm going to take, so I have these two distributions that I'm trying to compare to each other. And first I measure the observed, distant, uh, observed difference in some test statistic. Let's say it's what's the difference in means of these two groups. But it could be any um, 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 difference in test statistics. Um, now I take those distributions, I concatenate them, and then I repeat this multiple times. So I just shuffle them around, and then I partition them into the sizes that they, they originally were in. Um, and now on those two partitions, I say, okay, what's the test statistic applied to this, and what, what does it apply to this? So what's the mean of this group, and what's the mean of this, and now what's that difference? So um, at, the at the end, what I'm getting is how often, you know, um, if I shuffled the data many, many times, how extreme is that um, observed difference that I saw. Um, so this is actually, um, you know, really nice and simple in in Python. I'm going to try to go to this. This I, okay. So I am going to generate some data, more log normal, and I have several. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth here because I probably have negative one minutes, but. Uh, um, here is just kind of the simplest, um, least efficient way to do it, where I'm just iterating through all the samples, and I'm doing exactly that pseudo algorithm that I told you. One minute, all right. Um, and then finally, at the end, I'm getting kind of, so in my um, programmer art blue, um, this is, this solid line is, kind of, this is the observed difference um, that I saw in between those two groups. And this distribution is that permutation sampling of all the differences that I saw. And the dotted lines are the 95 confidence interval. Um, so this really gives you a p-value. Like the area under this curve right here is um, your p-value. Um, so it goes on to just put it into one of these where you can play around with it and have fun. Um, but um, I should go to any questions if we have any. All right, thank you very much. 
So let's start with some questions. Oh, yeah. Hey, sorry, behind the uh, column. I was wondering about the resampling. You said that it throws away the 100 years of statistical inference. For the resampling, when did the math, do you know when the math comes around to like make sure that that's correct? Is that also pretty new? Uh, so I think it's really been enabled simply by compute power. Um, the fact that you can do um, several thousand iterations on a data set of a million things and you can fit that into memory if you want to or um, um, but um, yeah there are um, I, I have a feeling that the, um, the hardware and capabilities kind of led the um, theory but yeah there is a there's um, a whole body of work on randomization techniques um, so bootstrap and permutation tests are two big ones, but there's also other Monte Carlo simulation methods as well. Yeah. Hi, this is a little bit uh, off topic. May I ask uh, which visualization library are you using for the graphs? Uh, bouquet. Yeah, I originally thought I would do hollow views, um, mostly as like uh, to force myself to do a project in it. Um, I, re I really like bouquet for interactivity. Um, I didn't get around to making these um, have tooltips, but you can do that pretty easily where on your bar charts you could, as you hover over, you see what the actual values are. So just some things that you can't get in Matplotlib or Seaborn. Um, I saw you, you uh, had uh, an exponential distribution for the duration of time that uh, the users are playing a game. Is that uh, like a realistic distribution? Uh, is that typically? Um, I would say it's not realistic because I don't think people obey any mathematical formula. Um, and I'm not just being glib about that. Um, what I mean is that I, you really have playing your game lots of populations of people. You have like a big clump of like people that you just installed the game yesterday and they behave one way and you got the people that you, you were featured three months ago and you got this huge burst of people then. And so, uh, um, uh, so, okay, no, so I mostly picked it just because um, it's non-normally distributed, and uh, uh, so it violates things like TTS, things like that. Have you checked out S mode? Uh, it's a uh, Python library. It does, it does a lot of those uh, simulated uh, permutation in your sample. No, what is it called? S mode. S mode. No, but I will tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, well, thank you very much, Dennis. Let's give a last round of applause. <laughs>